Next story, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen it lately, but sticking, you know, staying in tune with the the theme of zillennials and being on social media. I wanted to bring up these two companies because, and we don't have to talk or get into all this election stuff and, and worry about politics and anything like that. But, you know, I watched this story unfold on Tuesday and I was watching it live and Twitter and Facebook, they are, they're behemoths, okay? You can't turn left or right without hearing about Twitter or Facebook or reading a tweet or reading a post. And, you know, people use social media to get their news, to, to interact with their friends. It's, it's not like you open up a newspaper anymore and see what's going on. You know, you look to your friends for what they're tweeting about what's going on. You look to different, you know, news articles or or newspapers on Twitter, on Facebook, and you look at all there. And this whole story is just talking about, uh, you know, privacy and their ability to censor whatever they deem censorable. So if Twitter doesn't like something you say, should they have the power to censor it and take it down? Or should they be held accountable for you posting fake stories or posting lies that potentially lead other people into believing, uh, you know, what you've written or what the article's about? And of course, you know, I could probably argue both sides. Maybe you should do your own independent research on stuff that you read online, especially if it's coming from a you know, a sketchy source or something, if it's one of your friends or if it's somebody that you're not too familiar with, you should definitely look that up, do your research on it yourself. You know, don't go to Wikipedia and trust everything you read. But, and on the other hand, you know, these guys own these companies. They should still have control of what they're doing with them and stuff like that. But with that being said, Glenn, I don't know if you want to touch too much more on this story or if you kind of want to just see, you know, how how this testimony in front of the Senate has been affecting their stock prices recently? Mm, I got a lot I want to say. I got a lot I want want to say, too. I I don't know. This this ain't the forum for it, bro. Exactly. Exactly. And and I've already gotten lamb blasted by somebody (laughs) talking about, Glenn, I thought you said you never talk about politics. Right. Don't talk about politics unless it becomes part of a stock story. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so I, I am very adamant about that as well. So yeah, I got a lot that I want to say. Me too. I think that the story puts some perspective behind what we're seeing on Facebook. Yeah. No matter where you sit, wherever wherever you are ideologically, um, the story is the story, and it's going out there uh, so that people understand what's going on. That, so we're looking at it as a story, nothing more. Nothing right. less. Really is just a story to let you know what's out there. Now, with all of that being said, let's go straight to, as Warner Wolf would say, let's go to the videotape. Let's go <laughs> look at the stocks. That's all I want to say about that. Because if not, I'm finna, I'm finna hear it. Somebody's going to post something. That's what something. I'm saying. Let's get back in here. Let's get to the grass. Let's get to the <laughs> analysis. <laughs> there you go. I'm with that. So Facebook right, so and Facebook Twitter. And so Twitter's down here. Now, notice where Twitter sits in this watch list. Twitter's all the way at the bottom as yep. far as VST. All right. Point seventy eight. Look at that. It's all the way at the bottom by our master indicator, where Facebook has got a VST of 1.28. Facebook, undervalued, which is a good thing. Relative value, upside potential, good, above one. Relative safety, above one. What's hurting it? The next indicator we'll talk about relative timing. It's looking at the short-term price trend of the stock. Above one, RT above one, the stock's in an uptrend. RT below one, stock's in a downtrend. So fundamentally, undervalued, relative value, relative safety above one. Fundamentally, Facebook is good. VST is at 1.28. What's hurting it right now is RT. Now, for 99 cents in that trial to the software, Mm -hmm. You look at, if I own Facebook, I know that fundamentally it's sound. 
but it might not be the right time to be in it. Or if I do own it, this may be a good time to play an options play by, you know, selling a covered call or buying a married put, something along those lines. But this is the kind of information you get from VectorVest when you analyze a stock. Uh, Clayton, you can analyze Twitter. I'll analyze Twitter in a second. Thinking about that 99 cent trial, Glenn, I mean, if you could pay somebody 99 cents to take a look at your current portfolio and break down your current portfolio and the stocks that you have in it and say, yes, this is a good stock, hold on to this stock, or this stock's in a downtrend, it's ready to sell right now. Maybe you need to clean up your portfolio a little bit and, and prune it and weed out the bad stocks. I mean, if it's not worth 99 cents to have a program like VectorVest analyze your current portfolio and not look at it at, a, at an emotional standpoint or somebody that's, you know, Glenn, we know you love Apple, so you're going to say, yeah, it's great to have Apple in your portfolio. But if, if VectorVest is looking at it in a completely analytical sense and it can break it down in this manner for just 99 cents, I mean, that's... That's worth it. That's worth I it. I totally to, agree. Yeah, to clean you up and, and get you ready for the future. But looking at Twitter here, so it's trading at $43 a share right now, and its value is down around $8 a share. And I used to follow Twitter a couple years ago. I haven't looked at it too much. I haven't been doing any technical analysis on it lately and, and looking at the graph or anything like that. But this stock is definitely overvalued. It's, it's trading much higher than the value is right now. And that's one of the things that's going to bring down these other indicators down here, especially this relative value at 0.22. So with your relative value at 0.22, this is definitely not a good long-term play. It doesn't have that upside potential that we talked about earlier when we were talking about relative value. Relative safety, however, right around that level of 1, but it's not above 1. So it's still, I don't want to say too risky, but it's still considered a risky stock because it's below one. And we are definitely not in an uptrend right now. We are in a downtrend with RT being below 1.0 at 0.87. And of course, with all of these indicators below one, our VST is also below one at 0.78. So if this is something you're looking at, or if this is something you're currently holding in your portfolio, I would give it a second look, maybe reassess why you bought it in the first place, how long you wanted to hold it, and if you're watching it fall, how far are you going to watch it fall? Glenn, I was talking to one of my friends earlier today, and he told me uh, he was investing in Moderna, and I think he actually had some Pfizer as well, because he was wanting to hit on those uh, vaccine plays, right? Right. So he hit on it. He's He had the gain from Moderna and everything. And now he's just like, well, when do I sell? You know, he said, <laughs> one of my biggest problems is I hold on to these losers and then they, then they just keep losing. So he, he's, he said his biggest problem right now is he doesn't know when to cut his losers short and, like I say, weed out his portfolio and reinvest into something that could potentially move, move up. Because, you know, a lot of people out there, if you watch a lot of different in, investment advice they're going to say dollar cost average, buy as mm. it goes down, because it's always going to go back up. That's well, the worst thing you can do. When you're talking about individual stocks, who says it always has to go back up? You know what? I mean, maybe generally it does, but who says? And who says how far it's going to go down before it decides to go back up? So I don't know if he's watching today or not, but that's that's what he said was his biggest concern right now was figuring out when to sell and when to cut short his losers and take the profit on his winners. You know, and you, my advice for that would be to figure out who you are as an investor, set your trading plan, and follow your trading plan. You know, if you're a conservative investor or a prudent investor, you don't want to see those huge wild swings. So I wouldn't recommend getting into a, a stock like Twitter with uh, below one relative safety that's in a downtrend or anything like that. But VectorVest helps you do that. You know, Glenn, in that 99 cent trial, you can go and you can look through the strategies of the week. You can figure out what type of investor you are. And then you can learn to analyze each and every one of these stocks, just like Glenn and I are doing right now. And 
and figure out, yes, this is a good stock for me. I should get into this and I'm going to get, perhaps more importantly, I'm going to get out of it when it does this. All right. So, you know something? I won't even look. I know we're we're going over on time. It is what it is. We do it every week. <laughs> um, I'm not going to even look at the graphs between the two. In the space, you can clearly see that Facebook is outperforming Twitter. Yes. So if you want to be in that space, that's a Facebook is the way to go. Uh, Leonardo says, Glenn, I have a question about timing the market. The MTI is above 1.7, but all the market signals are bullish. If I type my stops, I can wake up tomorrow and the market goes down 10%, then I don't want to sell. Why? All right, so if if you're concerned about stocks that you're holding long term that could have the potential to go down, this is a time to put um, some kind of a collar, uh, uh, an options collar on your portfolio. Because now it's protection. You're actually buying a put, selling a call. It's financing, buying the put. All right, so you put a collar on your portfolio, especially knowing that the market's uh, MTI is at 1.7. I would think about doing that, especially if these are stocks that you don't want to get rid of. All right, so um, how can I tighten my stocks, but at the same time don't sell if the market opens as a crash by more than 10% of the open? And Leonardo, I just explained. Yeah. That's probably the best way to go is to put an options play. Other than that, if you got stops and the stocks go down and they hit your stop, get out right uh, that's, that's what's gonna happen there's nothing i don't want to say there's nothing more annoying but it's pretty annoying if a stock comes down barely touches your stop loss and then rockets off of it the next day and just shoots mm-hmm. straight up but you have to remember that your stops are there for a reason they're there for to, they're there to protect your profits and to protect your essentially your portfolio so you know follow your trading plan and then if you feel like maybe you should reassess your trading plan, if you're going forward, you're not too comfortable with what you're doing, you know, you can reassess it later. But don't get caught up with the, the fear of missing out and right. all of that stuff, like uh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, and, and that stuff. There's no room for that when you're trading. And Chris puts up another thing, sell half. I, you could. I'm okay with that too, especially knowing that the market is looking toppy. Lock in profits on half and let the other half ride. You can do that as well. But um, Chris, Leonardo was like, I really don't want to get rid of my stocks. And if that's the case, I would go that options route. Hey, if you like this content, guess what? You can join us live every Thursday at 2 p.m. here on YouTube. Join VV Nation. We hope to see you there.